Number 19, letter A. At what speed will a proton move in a circular path of same radius as the electron in exercise 22.12? So the speed of the electron in that example was 7.5 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. All right. So what we're going to do is this. It says uh, we have to find the speed of the proton and we know that the radii, all right, between the proton and the electron must be the same. In other words, that the radius of the curved path the proton is following must equal the radius of the curved path that the electron is following. Now, since we're talking about curved path and we're talking probably about magnetic field and all this stuff and blah, 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 we should probably be using the formula over here on the right-hand side. In other words, that the uh, radius of a curved path a proton will uh, move in um, while it's in a magnetic field will equal the mass of the proton times the velocity of the proton divided by the charge of the proton multiplied by the magnetic field of the proton. And that will then equal same thing for the electron, right? Now, it's going to, so here's the thing, right? There's a couple of things that are going to cancel. Um, it's basically setting up, uh, it's saying that the proton is, you know, going to be in the same environment. So I am going to assume that the that the magnetic fields uh, for both were the same. So if they're the same, they go bye-bye, right? Now the charge, you might say, well, this is a positive 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, and this is a negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. That is correct. However, though, these are really the magnitudes. They are really the absolute values, and therefore, they will indeed go bye-bye. So now what do we realize? We realize that we have a nice simple relationship here between the two. In other words, if I want to find the velocity of the proton now, I just have to simply divide the mass of the proton for both sides. So what we're going to get is the mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron divided by the mass of the proton. So what's the mass of the electron? That's memorized, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 19th. What's the velocity of the electron? Well, that was given in that problem, 7.5 times 10 to the 6th. Divided by the mass of the proton, that's memorized, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27th kilograms, okay? So this is all the work. That's it. And now just solve it. Plug it on into the calculator, okay? So it, come, uh, it becomes 1 point, uh, excuse me, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 7.5 times 10 to the minus, uh, excuse me, 10 to the 6th divided by 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27th. So we get a value here. The velocity is going to be about 4.09 times 10 to the 3rd, and that is in terms of meters per second. All right? That is the velocity of that proton. All right, so let's take this and we'll move it to the side. Maybe we'll need it. I have no idea. So let's see, letter B. What would the radius of the path be if the proton had the same speed as the electron? So, okay. So basically now, uh, well, we now, yeah. So what we can do, it says, it's asking now, uh, what would the radius of the path be if it had the same speed as the electron? So basically now, we're going to do the same kind of uh, analysis here, but we've got to look at it slightly differently. Okay. Notice what they're saying is the same. The speeds are the same now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my original formula that the radius of a curved path of a moving charge in a magnetic field will equal the mass of that charged particle times the velocity of that charged particle divided by the charge of that charged particle multiplied then by the magnetic field strength. It's external, right, to the to the particle. Let me solve this for V now, okay? If I solve that for V, watch how simply we can do this. Cross multiply the QB on up and cross multiply the M on down. And notice here now I solved for V, okay? Now, this could represent the velocity of an electron. If I have the charge of the electron, the magnetic field strength that the electron was experiencing, maybe I shouldn't really write a sub E there because it not really technically for the electron, but you can if you want. It doesn't really matter. This would be the radius of the electron, and this is the mass. Now, I can do the same thing then and create a formula for the velocity then of the proton, right? That would be equal to the charge of the proton times the electric field the proton is experiencing multiplied by the radius of curvature of that proton, then divided by the mass of the proton. Now, what did they say is equal? Well, they told you that the speeds are going to be equal. So wait a minute, if the speeds are equal, what do you know about these ratios then? They must also be equal. So in other words, I can write this now. Q sub E times the magnetic field strength 
that that electron is experiencing times the radius of curvature of that electron divided by the mass of the electron will equal then the charge of the proton, magnetic field strength of that the proton is experiencing times the radius of curvature of the proton divided by then the mass of the proton. Now again, several things are going to change, uh, excuse me, remain constant. The charges cancel just for the same reasons I discussed in A, and the magnetic field uh, will also cancel. So this is RE over ME is then going to be equal RP over MP. And what the heck are we trying to solve for? What would the radius of the path be for the proton? So i got to solve this now for RP. Watch. Cross multiply. Bada bing, bada boom, you are done with solving. Now it's just a plug and chug. So now all we got to do is plug this stuff on into the calculator basically, right? The mass of the proton, that's memorized. 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27th. The radius now of that electron's path, okay? That we're going to need. That Guess where that comes from? That comes from now, number 22.21. And that had a value of 4 point, whoops, 4.27 meters. Okay, that was the answer to that question. And then divided now by the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. That's going to equal the radius that the proton will have. And let's do it. 1.67 times 10 to the minus, oops, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27th times then 4.27, divided then by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And this now radius is going to be 7.8, I guess 3, times 10 to the third meters. All right? It's significantly larger, right? It's almost, it's more than a thousand times larger. That's because the mass of the uh, proton is almost more than a thousand times uh, larger than the electron. So that's what it is. Right, has more inertia. So that takes care of that one. Oh boy. Let's see, what's uh, what's letter C? This is like one of those never-ending problems. Uh, what would the radius be if the proton had the same kinetic energy as the electron? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, the so <laughs> we have to use the velocity of the electron uh, that was given in that problem. All right, so the, the kinetic energy of the uh, proton has to equal the kinetic energy of the electron. All right, so the kinetic energy here of the proton would equal then one half the mass of the electron, because remember, it's equal to the kinetic energy of the electron. So I'm just expanding that formula times the velocity of that electron squared. So kinetic energy now of the proton will be equal to one half times the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31, times then the velocity, which they gave to in the problem is 7.5 times 10 to the sixth squared. So the kinetic energy of the proton now, what is it equal to? This is going to be 0.5 times then 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 7.5 times 10 to the sixth squared. All right. So we get 2.56 times 10 to the minus 17th joules. Now, how do we connect then joules to radius? It might not seem very apparent, but... What I can do is, and I could have done this, by the way, at the beginning as well. I just chose, I guess, not to. So we can expand on this formula, right? What's the kinetic energy of the proton then? Well, I can simply substitute now one half times the mass of the proton times the velocity of that proton squared. So now we might start to see a connection, right? If I can solve this now for the velocity of the proton now, then I can do the exact same steps as I have performed in letter A. All right. And I probably should have done this via substitutions instead of calculating. I think some values would cancel nicely, but you know. So one half times the mass of the proton, which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27th times then the velocity of the proton squared would equal then 2.56 times 10 to the minus 17th. Okay. What we're going to do, divide this on out, bring it over here. And then I got to find the square root of this because I want to find just the velocity. So when I take the square root here, see you later, two. And now this is the calculation, okay, to find the velocity of that proton. So it's the square root then of that answer, 2.56 times 10 to the minus 17th, divided by, I'm using the exact value in the calculator, divided by 0.5 times now 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. 
All right. And I get an answer here. Now the velocity of the proton um, is going to be equal to, what do we have? 1.75 times 10 to the 3, 4, 5, it looks like. Okay, meters per second. Now, that's the velocity, okay, of the proton. Now we're going to use, okay, so now we know the velocity of that proton, and now we have to find the uh, radius, okay, of that proton. So actually, um, actually, well, no. Yeah, never mind. It's actually not going to be, uh, it's not going to be similar to A. I can calculate this in a different way. I don't know. I'm seeing it just differently now. So forget about then uh, thinking about back to letter A. Um, because I have now the velocity of the proton. What I can now use is they want to find the radius of the proton. Then I need to know the mass of the proton, the velocity of the proton, divided by the charge of the proton, and the magnetic field that the proton is experiencing. So what I need back you know, from that problem is going to be the magnetic field. And they told us back in that problem that it is 1 times 10 to the minus 5th Tesla. Okay, so we can plug everything on in. The mass of the proton is going to be 1.67 times 10 to the minus... 27. The velocity here is 1.75 times 10 to the fifth. Divided them by the charge of the proton, which was 1.6 uh, times 10 to the minus 19th, times then 1 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right. Okay. So 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27th, times then that value, 1.75 times 10 to the fifth, divided then by. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th times 1 times 10 to the minus 5th. Getting a value here of about 183 or so. 183, and that's then in terms of meters. All right? Uh, the same momentum now. <laughs> All right. The same momentum. Yay. So momentum, remember, momentum P is equal to mv, all right? So the momentum here of the electron is equal to the momentum of the proton. So this would be the mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron is equal to the mass of the proton times the velocity of the proton. So what I need to do is solve that thing for uh, velocity of the proton. So simply divide it by the mass. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to plug in the numbers. I'm going to do it algebraically this time. So this formula now represents the uh, velocity of the proton now, okay? And what I got to do is I got to do the same thing as I just did, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to now take the uh, radius, because that's what we're trying to find, I think, what would be the radius, right, of the proton will now equal the mass of the proton times the velocity of the proton divided then by the charge of the proton times the magnetic field that that proton is experiencing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little substitution. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this because that's equal to the velocity of the proton and substitute it on in here, okay? So the radius of the proton then will equal the mass of the proton times mass of the electron, velocity, oops, times the velocity of the electron all divided by the mass of the proton, divided then by the charge of the proton times the magnetic field, and if you notice, mathematically these two will cancel. So what this leaves me with that the radius of the proton will equal the mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron, all divided by the charge of the proton. Interesting. Times the magnetic field. And we know all these values, so let's just plug it in. The uh, mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. The velocity there was given in the problem of 7.5 times 10 to the sixth, up here. And then divide that now by the charge of the proton, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, which actually would have been the same as the charge of the... Uh, electron, and then um, multiplied by that magnetic field strength, which was 1.5 times 10 to the minus fifth. And here we go. So 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 7.5 times 10 to the sixth, divided then by parentheses 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th times 1 times 10 to the minus fifth. So it works out to be 4.27. Huh, interesting, right? If you notice, that's the same exact answer as we had before in terms of the radius for the electron. And that's in terms of meters. 
And um, if you notice, I mean, we I saw that before, I just didn't mention it. If you notice, you know, in terms of this formula, look, it's all, what's the charge of a proton? It's the same as an electron, right? So this is really massive electron, velocity electron, charge of an electron, essentially. So it should be the same, okay? So that takes care of that, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if you can. And uh, look forward to helping you with more problems, as long as they're not as long as this. Take care.